Good evening. It is Saturday evening and it has been a big, big day on the homestead. Like, huge. Uh, they started off with a local gentleman uh, coming and picking up all of our lawn equipment uh, so that we can uh, get everything serviced to start out the new season because, well, <laughs> you know, our lawn mowers and our weed eaters and our tillers and all of those things tend to work really <laughs> a lot better if we get them serviced at the beginning of the year and about half of them aren't working. We need belts all around. We need carbs all around. It's, it's a, it's a thing when you've got property to take care of, you've got to take care of your tools and your equipment. So, um, that was on our to-do list. We found someone that was willing to come and pick the stuff up. He came out, I think with his grandfather, we had a wonderful visit and, uh, we got to introduce them to our Coney Coney pigs, walk them around the homestead, share with them a little bit, you know, our plans and what we're doing here on the Collect G Cells homestead for Ozarks Living Online. And so we're super excited about that. It went really well. Um, I went deep down the rabbit hole last night on um, my seeds. I literally have seeds from one end of the place to the other, but it's a huge deal because we got our entire winter garden in our, at least in our already pre-cultivated areas, completely in today. Um, so what I wanted to do is to share with you guys some of what we uh, planted today. So first of all, here's a vintage seed packet for you. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this seed packet is so so old that it's falling apart i don't know if the seeds are going to take but it's lettuce and i figured hey we'll give it a try if it doesn't work that's fine this was my grandmother's um also very very old seed packet uh farmers co-op seeds and this was spinach we did a full bed of spinach collards so i sent my husband over to grab my seeds earlier today and <laughs> The first thing that we were going to plant was collards and we almost forgot. And so I was literally planting these in the dark uh, tonight. And I want to show you this because I, I love these folks. They were really good even during the beginning of COVID when it was so hard to get seeds, um, to get seeds from these folks. And so the people that I got this from, here we go, collards, is the seed plant in Sulphur Springs, Texas. So thank you for, for the collards. And I'm going to be needing some more uh, later in the year. But for now, uh, more lettuces. We put in uh, just a general blend gourmet lettuce, burpee. I think we picked this up at our local tractor supply when we were getting some other stuff for the homestead. Uh, something else. This is going to be all over the place. Um, I've never planted these before. Dragon tail radishes. These should be so fun and I can't wait to see how they do in one of our raised beds. Of course we have our watermelon radishes. China rose radishes. Daikon radishes. Gotta have your French breakfast. It's definitely one of my favorites, especially whenever you get it young. Champion radishes. All right. So one of the things that I'm most excited about, and one of my fellow homestead homies is actually the one that lit me on to this, and this is rainbow Swiss chard. I like to do end caps that have flowers, and because um, I didn't plant any flowers for my uh, winter or early spring garden, I did plant some Swiss chard. I also want to do some in my seed starts. Um, and see how I can do and see if I can do them in containers because I have a lot of places where I can have containers. 
Um, so we'll see how that goes uh, once I actually get the seed starting station up and going. Uh, but I'm super excited about this and I can't wait to see how it performs in our beds. So that one, that one's going to be, that one's going to be great. All right. So um, this one is brand new. Never tried this one before. It's called Corn Salad Bistro. And they're supposed to be very sweet, buttery leaves. I don't like crisp or uh, crunchy lettuce. I like soft le lettuces. So I saved back some of these to also do in the seed starting station. So now, I don't know about you guys, but I have never had a yellow carrot. Beyond Organic Seeds is one of my favorite places to use for seeds. And they have this beautiful yellow solar, uh, yellow solar heirloom carrot. And I um, actually had some carrots that I had sown last year that came up through the snow, um, but it was kind of sparse. And so I sowed these in amongst that bed. And of course you guys will see that later. Super excited. Um, I got to figure out where I can plant some more carrots. All right, let's see. Free gifts. So as you guys know, whenever you order your seeds from different suppliers, um, this is Henry Fields, and they're in um, Iowa, Shenandoah. Um, this was one of the ones that I got free, and I i don't think I've ever actually done this one before, but it's a 76-day carrot. They're supposed to get eight inches long, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how they do. Um, yeah. That should be good. So that'll give us three types of carrots that we've got in the ground. All right. So back to the lettuces. Um, my husband is a fan of arugula. It's not a huge uh, favorite to me because it has such a robust and peppery flavor that I find that it's good in small quantities. But it is good mixed with other types of lettuce. So we'll probably end up doing lettuce bundles that have some arugula and then some of these other kinds that we're that we're growing as well. Um, spinach. I really wanted to use my new spinach seeds that I received this winter, but I had these Ferry Morris seeds that I needed to use up because they're getting kind of old. And so I figured, okay, spinach is definitely something that you can succession plant. And so I want to go ahead and use this one up and then we'll probably use these as micros and then plant more later. All right. So this is the spinach that I wanted to put in the ground. I didn't get this one planted, but we'll get it next time. Um, so let's see what else we've got. I love planting guys. Like I literally, I came in, I haven't even, I haven't even washed my hands yet. We worked all day into the night. I'm supposed to go help a friend put in her garden tomorrow. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'm even going to be able to walk, that'll be a miracle. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got some Tom Thumb lettuce again with the succession. I'm definitely going to get some of these. And I'm thinking about um, doing these in the seed starting kind of like micros. Um, anybody have any ideas on that? What do you think? Um, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Uh, what I keep shuffling through here is I bought a bunch of cover crops from Baker Creek and my husband and I just came up with a plan. We have some new areas that haven't been cultivated in, in many years that we are wanting to go ahead and, and get started planting in. And we use the, um, back to Eden and the deep mulching, uh, methods, but we don't have a huge amount of mulch right now. And we're looking for local suppliers and folks to partner with for that. Um, but since we are rather remote and rural out here, we're having trouble finding folks that will work with us without just charging a ridiculous amount of money. I, I won't tell you, but it's like highway robbery. Um, so we've got buckwheat. Buckwheat. Several of those. Um, white sonora wheat. Red fire wheat, uh, as well as flax. Oops, 
flex and millet. And what we decided that we would do is we would put in four separate rows um, in the new area that hasn't been cultivated. And we would use these cover crops to start to bring that soil to life. And we'll be able to use these for our animals. So we're super excited about that. Hopefully we'll get to do that next weekend. Yeah, we'll see weather, etc. blah, blah, blah. But we'll keep you posted on it. All right, so more carrots that I want to get in the ground. I didn't get these planted today, but I specifically requested, is it going to focus? Yeah, I specifically requested this variety, and I, I, I hope to find a spot for those soon. Uh, let's see, Italian garlic. That's from last year. Uh, mustard. So I still have so much mustard seed here. Yeah. Um, but I did, I probably did a 10 by two and a half bed where I sewed it fairly thick because I like to, um, use what we thin out for greens and then allow them to continue to mature. And I really heavily sewed my beets, my radishes, um, my lettuces and, um, the mustard. So we'll see how that does. I hope it does well. Those seeds are kind of old. So, you know, worst case, we'll just plant something else. All right. So the biggest thing that we did today that I, that I really am excited about is we took and repurposed some old fence panels from a previous home that I used to have. Um, and with a few T posts and some zip ties and did a, I would say 20 foot run, um, to plant, uh, English peas. So seeds, we get them all over the place, right? These actually came from an auction that my mother went to a year or two ago. These are from Hastings and they, which is in Atlanta. And I mean, guys, I still have so many peas. I don't normally count when I do seeds, but I counted, I put 90 because I planted both sides of the trellis. Um, 90 of these and yeah, I still have so many more. So I've got to figure out where I'm, <laughs> where I'm going to put out some more trellises and, and break up some new rows. Cause I want to get uh, a lot of the peas in the ground. They're great for the soil, for feeding it and enriching it. Um, I like to eat the peas whenever they're small. We also did a smaller trellis. I would say it's probably half or a third of a hog panel that was cut and we put a T-post on either end. Um, and then we did the Fairy Morris, hello Axie, uh, snow peas. Super excited about those. I love those when they're super crisp. I, I can just sit and eat them all day long as a snack. And um, me and one of my coworkers, hey baby, we, uh, we juice every day. And so I definitely will be able to use those for that. Um, I have some little marbles and they're heirloom variety. I want to find me a little spot to get those in the ground as well, but that will be on a different day, obviously. All right. So what's next here? Um, I've got a lot more lettuce seeds and I plan on doing a lot of succession with the lettuce. Um, the good thing about it is, is that I've got lots of containers I've got a lot of bags and I'm just going to have to invest in, in a lot of potting soil. Like that's all there is to it. Um, so that I can plant those, but I'm hoping to get those started in my grow room. Also, I did a seed exchange with my girlfriend, Chrissy Clegg, a few years back and she gave me some whipper oil peas and I want to try those out as well. So let's see. Lettuce. Yep. Also lettuce. Cotton seeds. So guys, I would love to have some feedback. I have never grown cotton, obviously with it being kind of treacherous. Uh, it was never really high on my to-do list, but we do have some property that we would want to plant that hasn't been planted before that, um, I don't know. Like I just, I've never grown it before. And so I'm interested, actually this is ridiculous. Mom is working. Oh, there we go. I have this as well as this. Can you see? Yeah. Super, super awesome, cool 
like I said, never grown it before. Don't even know like how to go about it, but it would be an adventure to figure it out. So give me some feedback, guys. All right, and gals, of course. All right, so I have two things of cotton. I was looking for this the other day. My friend got our, well, actually my sister-in-law, Catherine was up here with um, my niece and nephew last weekend, and I split up a lot of my seeds, um, especially things I have in bulk, and sent them home with her because she's a homesteader too. She actually lives in Mulberry on the property that I grew up on as a girl. Um, the name of that homestead, we named it Raccoon Springs. I don't know if they use that, but I really wish that they would. Um, anyway, sidebar. Um, I sent her with a bunch of different seeds and we're planning on partnering with the different crops that we're producing and doing some canning together this year, other food preservation. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting into fermenting. Um, I watched uh, some of the videos from our homestead homies, Doug and Stacy. And um, if I remember, we can put the link in there to down below. Um, where she actually used smaller jars to to do some fermenting of just like peppers and things like that. And I messed around last year and I didn't, I tried to do it without weights and they, they spoiled. It, didn't, it wasn't good. So I'm going to give that another try this year. I went on uh, Facebook Marketplace earlier this week and found someone that had two Ohio fermenting crocs, two gallons. Um, and she was asking $80 for each of them or for both. Of them, I don't remember, but I went and looked and to buy the covers and the weights would be that much again more. And I could get one full, um, fermenting crock, which would be about the right size for what me and my family will consume. Um, and I really want to do that. Like it's so on my wish list, but we'll see in time. All right. Me and my little sidebars. You can tell I've had a big day. All right. So chamomile, I thought I was going to sew chamomile today and I got out there and the packet's empty. I think that's going to be something that I need to do when I get some more seeds um, in my seed starting station. All right. More sugar peas, more sugar peas. So excited about this. Can't wait to get these in the ground. These are from uh, one, of, one of the companies that I like to order from as well. Here we go. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Yeah. Those of you that can read backwards. <laughs> these are purple tomatillos. Super excited. Those are going to go with our pineapple ground cherries. Super looking forward to having those in the ground. All right, what else do we got? Bok choy. So I have this shade garden that is only shaded like right up against the, the edge of the house. And then once you get out, it's fairly sunny. And, excuse me, and last year, that's where I put in my tobacco patch. And it did very, very well. And the soil is just amazing there. And so I, my husband, to surprise me, had gone in and put in pavers in a walkway semicircle there and so what he's done is he's made it to where I can do beds on either side of that walkway and the soil is just it's loamy and it's fertile and it's just ah it's amazing um so I did put in some bok choy and some of the other stuff that I'm going to succession plant uh is going to go there so kohlrabi never grown it before can't wait super excited um, you can thank Jess at Roots and Refuge for this one because, oh my gosh, I saw it and I was like, ah, I need that. Um, but every single time I picked it up, it said, so after danger of frost. And I know for a fact that we are not done with winter yet by a long stretch here in uh, Zone 7. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a seed start situation again feedback anybody what do you think um super excited can't wait but i only have the one package so i don't want to mess it up <laughs> uh let's see 
So these are the Armenian yard longs. And my husband and I have an arbor uh, trellis that we put in one place in our garden last year whenever we were focusing on raising um, baby uh, ducks, guineas, and chickens in our second coop. And this year, because we got the Cooney Coonies and they're in that pan right now, um, we've decided that instead we are going to do use our main run and our small brooder that we have in the house and get 20 Cornish crosses uh, instead of hatching out our own um, off of our flock. Last year, we spent a lot of time and a lot of energy on chickens. We only ate a couple of them because we waited too long to butcher. We didn't butcher any of our ducks. And we really love the duck eggs. So between the birds that we have now and the, uh, the chickens that we have now and the uh, ducks that we have now, we agreed that we want to diversify and get a few more layers but not very many but we want to get full grown birds and there's a lady who is cherokee something or other i'd have to find it and do a link but she has a lot of different types of birds just about anything that you want to find in this region she can get it for you um rare extremely rare birds and she has done me really well she'll deliver to the house and we got some cinnamon queens from her last year that do really well for us. So um, we're definitely leaning towards kind of restructuring what's where. And because of that, we have that trellis that we grew our lemon cucumbers on last year. And we're going to move that. And I want to I want to do the Armenian yard long on that. But obviously, it's, it's too cold for that yet. So that's just down the road planning. More arugula and more musclin for um, succession planting. All right, what else are we planting? Today was such a good day. It was like Christmas. I found more collards, yay! I don't know about you guys, but I love to can uh, polk salad, collards, and spinach, and to have those in the winter, it's amazing. Sunflower seeds, that's for later. Amaranth. Don't know when I'm supposed to plant this. Feedback? All right, arugula, more lettuce, more radishes, dinosaur kale. So today I put in a 20 foot row of dinosaur kale. Last year when I planted my kale, the goats got into it and ate it when it was very small and I never got to see it get big. And so I am hoping and praying that it has a chance to get started. It's supposed to be mature in 65 days. Um, and harvest uh, in as little as 30 days for the baby. So I planted it really thick. So again, we're going to, we're going to do the small and then we're going to let some of them get big so excited about this so basically on one of my garden walkways i did onions right up against either side of the walkway and then on one side is the collards and then on the other side is the uh, dinosaur kale so that's going to be awesome like once those get grown up just to walk down through there and feel the energy it's going to be amazing super excited so paint pins i bought a set of these for my husband he does all kinds of artsy craftsy stuff he's a youtuber and he has I'm um, touch the brush model but weathering and I love finding him different kind of tools and stuff that he can use and giving him pointers um on his uh on his painting and stuff I don't do that stuff anymore on a regular basis but I used to especially whenever I was in school I'm um, in Mulberry Arkansas I had this amazing art teacher Miss Charlotte and she really pushed me as an artist um, and yeah, anyway, paint pens, use it all up because I figured out that if I don't label my stuff when I plant, Lord knows where it's at. And I plant stuff on top of other stuff that I've already planted. So yeah, the best thing to do, label as you go. So what we did is, um, my husband picks up pallets, uh, from where he works for like a dollar sometimes. And then we take and we cut the pieces off of the pallets and use them to repurpose. And so we, um, Max, you're being annoying. 
we used those to put the names of what all of our plants were so that one, we would know, two, um, when we start doing garden tours, if you're curious what something is, and I forget to tell you, it's there. But also when my nieces and nephews and other people come to the homestead, I want for them to be able to visually see what it is, <clears throat> excuse me, that's planted beside the plant itself. So that the children, as they're learning and we're passing on, you know, our heritage and our culture and, and this lifestyle that those things will stick with them. So, yep, more beets, more turnips, more turnips. Guys, I planted, <laughs> my mom really liked turnips. And I like turnips and they hold for a long time. We actually sowed some turnips about this time last year that I didn't take the last ones out of the garden until fall. And even though they had been there all that time, um, we just kept removing the greens off of them, removing the greens off of them, and we still ate those turnips. I think we ended up eating them in November. So turnips are just great as far as being healthy, as far as being um, a root crop that you can use for the greens or you can use them for the tubers themselves. And I love to make them with like olive oil and almost like hash brown style. They're good in stir fries. You can juice with them. And if you get one that's kind of sweet, then you can even sit and eat it like an apple. And I had no idea I even liked turnips until last year. It's crazy. But anyway, um, we planted quite a few of those. Turnips are good because they're mature in 45 to 65 days so you can plant them and then when you pull them up you're just ready to pop something else in the ground where it goes i might have more turnips and more turnips uh beets we did some detroits and i have a lot more detroits because i like i said that side garden i was telling you about we are going to just fill it with root vegetables uh, to work up the soil. I'm hoping that my tobacco comes back from seed. Don't know if it will, but it's worth a try. So I have several different uh, brands of turnips. I pretty much pick them up all over the place, wherever, whenever. Parsnips. Someone tell me something about parsnips. The seeds for parsnips are not what I expected in the least. They're not anything like these other root vegetables. And the maturity, 120 days, like when do you plant these and when do you harvest them? I don't know. Never grown them, I don't guess. I would remember if I had, I guess. Kale. So, like I said, we, we did dinosaur kale. I've got a bunch of blue dwarf. We'll probably end up sowing some of that. Uh, don't know yet. And I have a mix that I got from Harley Seeds, right? Harley Seeds um, is a good company to get mixed varieties from. Um, they're non-GMO product, they're made in the USA. And like, this is a thousand kill seeds. So I was thinking I could do microgreens in my seed starter with that. Um, ooh, so super excited about this one. Also thinking about doing this one in the seed starter. Again, folks, feedback. Uh, dwarf. Siberian. Looking forward to that one. Let's see. What do we have here? It's so tiny. Oh, yes. So this is more uh, of the kale. So I got, I'm sure you guys are wondering, like, why is this girl growing so much kale, so many beets, so many, all these other things. So Obviously, you have the option of, you know, canning, of drying, of doing all these different things. But then you also have the option to share with friends and family. We're huge fans of barter. We barter with our fellow homesteaders all the time. And, you know, if I'm in a position where I'm able to grow all of these things and I can trade them for other things, either services or goods, then why not? You know, I think anybody that's being a good steward of what they've been provided and what they've worked for, then that should be something that you just plan on doing. So 
then there's also the option of being able to sell produce at the farmer's market. And I just found out today from the owner of the local Ace Hardware that they definitely are starting up the farmer's market in Prairie Grove, Arkansas, which is where I work for my day job. <laughs> and um, I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, if we have a lot of extra, then I can absolutely do that and support my seed habit or my mulch or whatever. So um, I think I covered everything that we planted today. So, so far in our winter slash early spring garden, we have planted or coming up um, turnips, potatoes, um, kale, collards, beets, radishes, of multiple kinds, two different kinds of peas, um, multiple kinds of radish, our, or not radish, lettuce, our Swiss chard, the funny radishes that I was telling you about, the purple long ones that I was talking about earlier, um, lots of garlic, a whole lot of onions, uh, I think I've got four 20 foot rows of onions, mm, strawberries, three different kinds of carrots, mm, mullen. So I distributed a bunch of mullen seeds at the end of my garden, not really in the cultivated area last year off of a main plant that I babysat, babysat, babysat last year. And I meant to bring in the clippings where I broke up the bottom leaves to show to you guys, but we'll save that for a different day because that's so much fun. Um, mullen is something that grows native here in Arkansas and in the Ozark Mountains where we're at. And you can take and you can lift it from out in the field or the pasture or whatever, and you can cultivate it. And so I have a spot at the end of my garden where I've cultivated it. And I have plants, everything from like little bitty to like big plants that are going to get huge. Um, and they're beautiful. They are good for so many different things. And I'd love to hear you guys feedback on, you know, have you messed with it before? Do you grow it? Um, would you be interested in growing it? Do you want to know more about it? Um, oh, super excited to find out that the nasty, nasty frost that we had did not kill my rosemary, my thyme, my oregano, my mints, or my curry. So we have adult starts of all of those things in the garden that are coming back from the root base. Um, my lemongrass, I've got three stands of lemongrass. I don't know. I haven't seen any movement on those yet. I don't know if they're going to come back out. Fingers crossed. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else am I forgetting? Oh, our peonies. They all have, uh, coming off the rhizomes, like shoots about yay big. That is huge because they had been in the same place and been neglected and had gotten fungus uh, where they were at last year when we started reclaiming the garden space. And so we lifted those from where they were last year and built a large raised bed at the bottom of a tulip tree uh, that uh, is basically bald on one side and it's, it's canopy is way up high. Um, so that, uh, they would have their own place to be. And so we're so looking forward to that. Last year, I got a picture. I think I posted it on Instagram of one of our peonies that was literally like as big around as my head. It was just so glorious and beautiful. I only have just the one color and I'm hoping to, um, to di di diversify, um, there. So it's just, it's been a, it's been a great day. Um, the last week has been really rough. Um, trying to kind of get our momentum back and get into the swing of things after the passing of, of my mother, it's, it's not been easy, but I find that getting out and doing what she would be doing with us if she was still here, um, it's, it's good. It's, it's good. It's, uh, it's therapeutic and it's productive 
and it's um it, I think it I think it will go a long way to helping us heal and and uh, continue to push forward with our shared dreams and the things that we've worked for you know as a family I miss her so much but uh, she would be very very happy to know that you know we we've, we've gotten the winter garden in and that we're making headway on you know preserving things. I've still got a ton of lemon balm that I need to process. I've still got a lot of tobacco that I need to process and that we dried last year. Um, we've got plenty of things to do to keep us busy, you know, besides our daily, besides our daily lives. Um, but we are moving forward and we are excited about the new growing season and we just hope and pray that everyone that's out there that's having worse weather than we are right now um, is staying safe and uh, warm and that um, our friends and family are doing well. And we send you all of our love and blessings and we hope that you stay safe and blessed. And we look forward to more updates soon. Bye guys.